At least 10 people are dead and 20 injured after a van carrying migrants crashed on a remote Texas highway. The crash happened in Encino. It's about 80 miles north of the Mexican border. Authorities believe all 29 passengers were migrants. The Texas Department of Public Safety says the driver of the van was speeding and veered off the highway. So according to uh, the witnesses on the roadway, there was no pursuit from Border Patrol. There was no pursuit from DPS. Uh, according to witnesses, they were traveling in the, the, out, the right lane here on 281 northbound and they tried to make a right turn onto the FM road right here and didn't even get over into the turn lane. Um, they were traveling at a speed way too fast to try to maneuver that curve and went into the metal utility pole. The driver was among nine others pronounced dead at the scene. The 20 who survived the crash were all taken to local hospitals with serious to critical injuries. So with more on this, let's bring in CBS News immigration reporter Camilo Montoya Gavez. Hey, Camilo, thanks for joining us. I had to read the script a couple of times um, because I couldn't believe there were 30 people in this vehicle. Um, I thought there was a typo. Um, and so, you know, we're hearing that, you know, the driver of the van was probably speeding. Do we know any more about what was going on and where the group was headed? Good morning, Anne-Marie and Vlad. We know that at least 10 people have died in this tragic incident, including the driver of the vehicle. According to local officials in Texas, the vehicle that crashed was transporting, as you mentioned, 30 people, despite the fact that a Ford passenger van can typically only accommodate 10 or even 15 people. So the vehicle was definitely severely overcrowded and over capacity. Uh, we know that local officials believe that many of those on board the vehicle were migrants who were recently uh, apprehended at, along the U.S.-Mexico border or who evaded capture uh, from border officials after crossing uh, the border. Uh, the site of the crash itself was only 80 miles away from the border. Um, and we also know that this is becoming a common incident, unfortunately, near the U.S.-Mexico border. Back in March, we saw an SUV in California crash into a tractor trailer rig, killing more than a dozen people, including migrants. Uh, we saw that same month another incident in which a car, a truck rather, in South Texas also crashed carrying migrants, and that killed eight people. And we've seen other numerous incidents of migrants dying and trying to enter the U.S., including off the coast of San Diego. And advocates blame current U.S. border policy in part for these deaths. They say that their current restrictions on seeking asylum and on entering the U.S. has forced migrants to take deadlier routes and to try to evade capture uh, by hiring smugglers who often crowd them into these uh, vehicles. And obviously, these conditions are conducive to deadly outcomes like we saw yesterday. So, Camilla, as we mentioned, some of the survivors are seriously injured. But uh, when are they potentially going to be released from the hospital? And then what's likely to happen to them? Well, that's an excellent question, Vlad, because as we have heard from local officials, many of those on board are believed to be migrants who don't have legal permission to be here in the country. Technically, after they are discharged from the hospital, they can be placed in deportation proceedings and they can also be detained by Immigration and Customs Enforcement for crossing the border illegally and for not having the proper documents to be in the country. But uh, they can also request forms of relief from deportation like asylum. But also now that they are victims of a potential crime, uh, they could also potentially have another legal avenue to request uh, permanent protection here in the U.S. So it remains to be seen how uh, Customs and Border Protection will handle these cases. Under the Biden administration, it is important to note uh, border agents and deportation agents have been instructed to focus on immigrants who may pose a public safety risk, a threat to national security, as well as recent border crossers. A federal judge, uh, as you know, just this week, blocked an executive order by Texas Governor Greg Abbott advising state troopers to pull over vehicles suspected of carrying migrants released from U.S. border custody. Now, the ACLU has also filed a lawsuit challenging this order. Um, you know, what's your take on this, and what are you hearing from communities impacted by this all? You know, you, you point out, or I think it was in the story, that, you know, uh, th that this vehicle was not being pursued at the time. Um, 
um, that the driver was speeding and the accident happened. But I, I presume um, blocking this sort of intervention is 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 a concern for people that um, that smugglers, migrants will take risks to avoid being captured, and we could see sort of a dire consequences. But you know, what are you hearing from the community? Well, the argument that Texas Governor Greg Abbott cited in his proclamation last week when he instructed the Departments of Public Safety in Texas to stop and reroute vehicles suspected of carrying migrants released from U.S. border custody was that these migrants could spread the coronavirus and jeopardize the health of Texas communities and over overburden rather local health care systems. So that is the argument that the governor cited for issuing this policy. It was a public health argument. But obviously advocates argued that that directive could lead to racial profiling because uh, they believe that authorities could not reasonably um, determine whether a migrant was on board a vehicle. Um, the Biden administration quickly sued, and now a federal judge in El Paso has temporarily blocked this order from being enforced, but it's only a temporary restraining order, so that will expire next week. After that, uh, the two sides will have to argue the case on its merits, and now the American Civil Liberties Union, as you mentioned, has sued um, separately to try to stop this Abbott order from being implemented after that temporary restraining order is lifted. So we know this is the latest escalation in this political and legal battle between the Biden administration and the Texas government. We know that Texas Governor Greg Abbott has already issued other orders uh, to uh, arrest migrants on local state trespassing charges to build barriers on private or state uh, land and also to remove the state licensing of shelters that house unaccompanied children in U.S. custody. On Thursday, ICE announced that a 37-year-old woman from, a Nicar uh, from Nicaragua died in its custody this week after being hospitalized for COVID-19. Um, Camilla, as you know, she's the 10th COVID-19 related death of an immigrant in ICE detention. Uh, what more is there to know on this, how migrants are being treated amid the spread of the coronavirus? And just clear up something for us, because you're starting to hear, you know, a lot of politicians blaming, shifting the blame on the rapid spread of the Delta variant in the United States, which doctors and public health officials say is due to unvaccinated Americans, you're starting to hear politicians right. shifting the blame to migrants and, and people that are crossing into the United States um, across our southern border. Uh, just explain to us what's going on. Sure. So I'll start with your second question. It is important to note that despite all those claims and arguments, most migrants who are allowed to stay in the U.S. are being systematically tested for COVID-19. Families with children who are allowed to seek asylum and stay in the U.S. are being tested for COVID-19 by local shelters and NGOs. And if they test positive for the coronavirus, they're being isolated in local hotels before they board buses or planes to their respective destinations in the U.S. Unaccompanied children who undergo a different process are being tested at least twice for COVID-19 while in the custody of the Department of Health and Human Services. And many of them, the teenagers who are eligible for the vaccine, are receiving doses of the vaccine. So that is important to note. Most single adult migrants are still being turned away rapidly to Mexico or to their home countries under the Trump era Title 42 policy. So most are not being let in. And those who are, many of them are being sent to ICE detention centers and ICE is the testing migrants uh, for the coronavirus and has begun offering them vaccination as well. So those are, those are their facts, and that's important to note. And um, I haven't seen any evidence so far to draw a direct line between uh, the nationwide surge in COVID cases and the spread of the Delta variant with the processing of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, for your first question about the current um, situation in ICE detention, it is important to note that at the beginning of the Biden administration, Vlad, 
ICE was holding about 14,000 immigrants. That number has grown to more than 25,000. So the number of people being detained by ICE has grown exponentially. And the main reason for that, Vlad, is because more people are coming across the border and then being detained in the interior of the country. And simultaneously, the number of COVID-19 infections inside ICE detention has also increased. Uh, there are currently more than 1,000 immigrants in ICE detention who are, have active COVID-19 cases. And as we know, this week, a 37-year-old asylum-seeking woman from Nicaragua died in ICE custody after being hospitalized for COVID symptoms and testing positive for the virus as well. So that is a concern for advocates who want to see ICE ramp up vaccination in ICE, in ICE detention custody, but also they want these immigrants to be released because they think they can continue their immigration proceedings outside of detention. All right, Camillo, with some very important context um, and facts for us, thank you very much as always, we appreciate it. Thank you guys.